Okay, YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful Easter Sunday. And today's video is going to be about why I got rid of my Seiko. Why I got rid of my Seiko 5 GMT. And it's not because I am making room for another watch. I, I do plan on buying another watch very soon, but um, that's not the reason why I gave this one away. It's not because I got tired of it either. I think it's an amazing watch. I think it's absolutely a tank in terms of its performance and its reliability. And it keeps good time for what it is. Like Seikos aren't really known for their accuracy, but this particular watch, very accurate. Barely loses time each month. Like, very impressive overall. The reason why I gave away my watch is just, it's somewhat complex and it starts in 2020. So back in 2020, I was selected to uh, go to Korea and uh, work with the Air Force for a little bit. So I showed up in Korea and I was looking for a place to train at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on base. And I found it. Uh, I found it and I met the people there. They were all good people. And the person, one of the individuals who was training there really stuck out to me. He made a really good impression on me. He was just, at the time, like I didn't think too much of it. Like. I, when I first met him, I thought like, okay, this dude's a little bit full of himself, you know, like he seems kind of cocky, a little like a little bit of a douchebag, but like, he's so cool. <laughs> he's so cool, you know? So <laughs> he's going to hate me for saying that, but <laughs> that's the way it is. Um, that's, that was really what I thought at first, but like more importantly, he was very nice off the bat. Again, he loved talking about himself, but he was very, very nice off the bat. And so we got along. And he was also a, he's also a freaking beast on the mats. Like, that dude kicks ass on the mats. Um, he can roll. He can roll. Anyway, I met this dude. He showed up, he showed up intermittently uh, to train. And, uh, you know, we, we became closer as time went on, like all of us as, as a team, like all of us in the gym, we all started hanging out more often. And we went up to Seoul a, f a couple times. We went up to, to, or sorry, we went down to Busan a couple times, took a train down to Busan. And that was, that was a horrible trip. I, I got my second COVID shot when I went down to Busan for the weekend. And then I, oh man, that was horrible. I felt so bad. Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, we all grew, we all grew closer as a group. And for our time in Korea, we like me and this guy. We hung out regularly. Uh, we always kept all of us really kept in touch fairly regularly, and we just had a good time. We made the most of it. And this dude, like the entire time he was in Korea. He was just like, he was like fun loving and spontaneous to a fault, really. He's the kind of guy in the friend group who, if you guys are walking around like and you've got Google Maps open and you're trying to find, you're trying to find where the next, where the next, you know, hangout spot is and you're like trying to navigate through a city you've never been through before, he's the type of dude that'll split off from the group without telling anybody and then like wander into a random store and then and then have his own little crazy adventure, and you guys got to go rescue him. Um, it's, he's just a really crazy guy like that, you know. And even though we, even though it was annoying as hell in the in the moment, I think it's something that all of us can appreciate about him: his spontaneity, and just the fact that when you hang out with this guy, you know you're in for a good time. You may lose a stripe. It's very possible that you might lose a that you might lose rank, and that you have to stand in front of your commander. Uh, that next that next uh, Monday morning, but you're guaranteed to have a good time that weekend. So there's that. Anyway, 
this guy, great dude, absolutely, absolutely good dude. Uh, and then March 2021, he received uh, PCS orders out to Okinawa. He got the orders, and I was super happy for him because I'm I was originally stationed in Okinawa. That's my permanent. That was my permanent duty station for Hawaii. So we would be able to continue hanging out, and uh, you know we would can, we wouldn't have to say goodbye just yet. You know. That's the hard thing about the military too. It's one of the hardest things about the military. It's saying, saying goodbye to, to friends that you have spent three years hanging out with and making. It's, it sucks, you know? And like, this is gonna make me sound like a bad person, but I have lost touch with a lot of people who you know, a few years ago, I would have, I would have called my best friend and it's not, and I haven't lost touch with these people because I hate them. I don't, I don't hate these people. And I, I'm pretty sure they don't hate me either. Like we hit, we all hit each other up every now and then and just, you know, check in on how we, how we're doing. But it's tough because, you know, you bond with these individuals, you get really tight as a group and you get really tight as friends. And then eventually people start getting orders elsewhere. People get out of the military, you know, ship off to different duty stations. And, and then the, the friend group slowly splits up, you know, you have to say goodbye to people and, and it hurts. It hurts. And, you know, again, it's hard to keep touch with these people too, because the work doesn't stop either. The military just keeps on going. It's a, this, it's a system that just keeps on chugging. And you've got things that you need to focus on in front of you, whether they are, whether or not they're like, whether or not they're very urgent, you know? There's just things in your daily life that you need to focus on. We all have responsibilities. We all have bills to pay. We're all adults here. We can't always just be, you know, texting each other, hanging out on FaceTime. You know, this isn't, it's not, it's not school. We're not in school anymore. But yeah, you say goodbye to people. They move. We all move on with our lives, and and we try to we try to keep in touch. But for a year at least, I didn't have to say goodbye to this to this person. It was just a quick like, see you soon, you know. So he goes back to Okinawa. He goes to Okinawa in March, and then I show up back in Okinawa in July, and you know we we from July. July 2021 to July 22, we got to hang out constantly. That's pretty much all we did. We always hung out. And he had his son with him. And I basically became that kid's uncle as well. Because, like, I was always seeing him wherever, wherever, you know, my best friend was, his son was too. Like, they were obviously, like, he's a father, you know, like, a father can't just abandon his child. Yeah. Uh, you can't just leave him at. You can't leave a four-year-old at the house to his own devices or a three-year-old. You know you can't. You can't do that. So wherever wherever we went, he his son was coming too, and I basically became this kid's uncle because like we just like I'm this dude's best friend. I'm his brother, not in not in blood, but you know in bond. And you know like we looked after this kid, and uh, all this time, right? Keep in mind, when I knew him in Korea, he was spontaneous, he was fun-loving, he was like always ecstatic, like super high energy, you know? It was hard for me, like me being a fairly, me being a fairly like mellow and somewhat emotionless dude, like it was a little bit tough to, you know, keep up with his energy levels a lot of the time. But when I met him again, when I reunited with him again, in Okinawa, something had changed, and I noticed it. I could feel it. He had just completely shifted. It seemed like that fun-loving, spontaneous person had had disappeared, and it was replaced by he was, and it was replaced by a shell of that former self because he was constantly stressed out. He was exhausted. He was exhausted from having to juggle his duties as a father, as an active-duty airman, and then like 
driving and being in a foreign country at that and driving back and forth like 30 minutes each way to and from work. It was tough for him and I could see it in his eyes. I could see just the desperation and the exhaustion in his eyes. And I won't get into the details of, of why his work was so challenging because but frankly, that's not my story to tell. But I could see that it was, everything he was going through at, at his job was just really, it was really weighing on him. And in his own personal life, uh, there were there were some toxic individuals that he was having trouble. Uh, there were some toxic individuals that, in his life that needed to go that he that he couldn't get rid of. And they weren't helping the situation either. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the situation and I'm looking at him and I I'm I'm worried about him. As a friend, like, you know, you see that and you and you're worried. And you want your friend you want your your friends to be happy. You want the best for them. And when you see them struggling, that just when you see them struggling, you can't help but feel you can't help but feel sympathetic, you know? And I'm thinking about it right now, and, and all those emotions are coming back too. It's tough. But yeah, he, um, he struggled a lot. And there were many times where, there were many times where he had to come to me for help. Um, I wouldn't say many times, but there were times where he had to come to me for help. And um, because that's what friends do. Like we just look out for each other. I'm not trying to make myself to be out. I'm not trying to make myself out to look like a hero or anything. I'm just trying to like prove the point that I. I, as his friend, tried to be there for him when he needed it most. And through all these experiences, that drew us even closer together as, as friends and as brothers, right? So eventually, July 2022 rolls, sorry, August 2022 rolls around. I have to leave Okinawa, I have to PCS, I come to Hawaii. And things were okay for a few months. Um, and I actually started to lose touch with him as well. Um, like I said earlier, you know, you move away and, and people move away and you lose touch. It actually started to happen to me and him. And keep in mind, like I still consider this guy one of my best friends, but we like we were going about our own daily lives and and we weren't able to hang out on the weekends anymore. So like we started to fall out of touch too. And I I was I was doing okay for a little bit, and uh, then I went to a new unit, and things things went spiraled downhill very quickly. I ran into troubles at work, but the point is, I was going through some tough times of my own, and eventually, uh, an operation came up that we we I had to start preparing for an op, and. Uh, one of the pieces of gear that I decided to get in preparation for this op was the Seiko 5 GMT. This is where the Seiko comes into play. I got that watch for uh, its ability to track three time zones simultaneously. You know, when I was using it out in the field, I was tracking Zulu time. Excuse me. I was tracking Zulu time. I was tracking uh, Hawaiian time back home. And then I was tracking my local time as well. So using that function, uh, or using that Seiko 5 GMT really just made my life easier. Um, because yeah. And like I've said before in, in my review of it, that thing is a freaking tank. It's, it's a beast of a watch. You can throw whatever you want at it. You can, you can run with it, die with it, shoot with it, do manual labor with it. Uh, dig, dig dirt holes, you know, and like, just, you can beat that watch around and it will not, it will stand up 
to any punishment that you can throw it in. You know, you'll be broken before it breaks. Um, and that's, to me, that was important because not only for the physical aspect of it just being a very resilient watch, but also like what it represents. After I came back from that operation, um, by the way, I don't want to try and exa over exaggerate how, how difficult that operation was. I, I was never in danger on that op. We were never in any physical danger. Um, we didn't have to do anything like, we didn't have to do anything that put our lives at risk. It was just a, it was a very like clean and mellow op, but things, things transpired that, um, that really made me question a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, and also the dread of having to come back to Hawaii and face the same situation that I was still in. Um, it felt, it just felt like hitting the pause button and you're going to be faced back in the same situation. Uh, and I, I was having a tough time dealing with that dread. And, but I can't, but I came back, I came back to Hawaii and, you know, that watch was still on my wrist and I managed to get through those, I managed to get through that period of time where I managed, I, I managed to get over those struggles that I was facing, you know, and that watch stayed with me and it had scratches on it, it had scratches on the crystal scratches on the bracelet and you know, a couple of hairline scratches on the case, you know, what? but those, those were all memories. Those were all memories of, of things that I've been through and things that I had gotten past. And they're signs of, of resilience really. So when my best friend, going back to him, was about to leave Okinawa and get out of the Air Force. He came to me and he asked me, hey man, I'm looking to get a watch to commemorate, you know, my time in, my time in the Air Force. You know, what recommendations do you have? I'm looking for something under $500. Naturally, one of the watches that I recommended he get was the Seiko 5 GMT. And, you know, I, I recommended that watch and, and he seemed to like the idea of it, but something happened in between, in between then and the time that he got out to where he wasn't able to get one. So I decided to gift him my Seiko 5 GMT because that watch, even though I've only had it for a short amount of time, less I've had it for I had that watch for less than a year before I sh before I mailed it out but I feel like he deserves that watch because he gave 9 years 9 years of his life to his country and he served his country honorably and he did it while undergoing some very, very uh, tough personal, like some very tough personal challenges in his life. He overcame some very, very serious things. Um, and it felt appropriate to give him that watch because I ended up going through some things in my own life too, you know? And I wanted to give him that watch because it is a sign that I still care about him and that he can always come to me for anything and our friendship matters. So if there's anything really to be learned from this video, it's that you're strong, you're resilient, and you can get through whatever problem it is you're facing right now. You can get past it. The obstacle that you are facing sometimes is the way forward into making you a better person. 
but yeah, you guys can get through whatever you're facing because you are strong. You are strong and you are tough. So I felt it was appropriate to give him that watch. That's why that Seiko 5 GMT is no longer in my collection. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I know this was a really, really heavy video and uh, I, I'm still wondering whether or not I should post this, but I do feel like there is an important lesson to be told here. So if you've made it this far into the video, I, I do really want to thank you guys for watching and for supporting my channel and uh, for being with me simply on this, on this journey uh, on YouTube and, and in life. So take care, guys. Um, remember to have a really good Easter. Uh, be thankful for, for this day, the fact that you're alive. And you know, take this as a sign that you know, no matter what has happened to you in your life, no matter what has happened in the past, you can move forward, you can do better, you can be better. You just have to believe in yourself. Um, you have to believe in something greater than yourself, too. So be safe out there, guys. Be well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.